We are in Acts chapter 5. The second coming of Christ is at hand. The second age of the kingdom is at hand. In about 40 years, Christ is going to return to rule over this earth. The Prince of Peace. This means we're going to have freedom from every wind of the doctrine of men. Not until 40 years, we're going to have to be overcoming it, fighting Christian spiritual warfare for 40 years to overcome every wind of the doctrine of men. Of course, we're going to, Christ is going to rule over this world with his rod of iron, a supernatural Bible, the royal law of God that's going to break up and consume all the kingdoms of men. Remember when Christ was on this earth, nobody could argue with him. Why? He's God. He spoke objective truth, but his words had power. He caused the wind and the waves to stop, didn't he? In fact, he was there in the beginning, and he said, let there be light, and there was light. The power of God and his royal law, he's going to rule over us, and men will not be able to oppose God. He's God. But the second coming of Christ is back, meaning Christianity from God, and uh, we've been under the prince of the power there. God wanted men to, to try the ways of men for 6,000 years of history of humanity to show that we need supernatural power from God. We need a perfect preacher. We need a perfect king. We need the perfect law of liberty, and now we have it. Now we can understand the prophecies in the Bible. Supernatural prophecies of God that he wrote 3,600 years ago in the book of Job. Now we can understand it. Why? Because what Job was talking about, what we needed to be patient for, was the second coming of Christ. And what Jesus, his prophecies in Revelation 22, verse 18, give to us the perfect law of liberty, his supernatural Bible. And uh, that's what the book of Revelation is about, the second coming of the Lord. Now we can understand it. Now we can believe it. We can believe in God. Every word of the Bible from God proves that God exists. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it and bought, bought a certain price part and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, And an eyes wise Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land. You see, we haven't had the Holy Spirit. We haven't had the Bible from God for 1,680 years. All we had was a strong delusion. Leviticus 10, verse 3. And we didn't have the power. We didn't have the supernatural power of God. We had Bibles men, wisdom from below. Other gospels, the gospels of men instead of the gospel from God. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land? You know, Satan possessed the bodies of men and convinced them that they could preach subject truth. Not God. No men can. Men are not God. So it could have been Satan possessed his body or other demons. But anyway, that's the wiles of the devil. Tell men that we can be like God. Why is he filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit to keep back part of the price of the land? You should know better. Man and I, you should know we're getting ready for the Prince of Peace to rule over this world. Why did you let this happen? Why are you not dealing with sin? Why are you not overcoming? Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, did it not remain your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your power? How is it that you've conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied unto men, but unto God. You know, with denominational Bibles, you preach whatever doctrine you wanted to. I mean, you couldn't, you do it to cause evil, but, uh, you know, God allowed the doctrine of men so that we'd understand the doctrine of men doesn't work. It wasn't blasphemy because we didn't have a law. Romans chapter 5, verse 13. But now, the Bible forgot his back. We pull a stunt like this. Lying to the Holy Spirit, blasphemy against the Holy Spirit. We're in trouble. So Ananias was not fulfilling the royal law, James 2 a. Consider, you know, Judas's financial motives 
Gershwin Grash. That's what Ananias was doing. He wasn't loving as God commanded and wasn't doing everything he did out of love. That was what the rule of law required. No, he was concerned about his pocketbook. Again, that's the problem with subjective for the men, but we have to come out of subjective for the men. No more respect of persons. That doesn't work. We were under that in denominations, but it doesn't work. That's why we were under it, to show that it doesn't work. And Ananias, hearing these words, fell and gave up, and great fear came upon all that heard it. With Christianity restored, it's time to quit with the play religions. See, they had the Pharisees, Sadducees, Zealots, the sects, the heresies, denominations of men. They don't work. Time to give that up. The play really, they were necessary because the Septuagint taught that Christ didn't come in the flesh. They changed the meaning of the word Elohim from plural to singular. So that's how they denied that Christ came in the flesh. First John 4 verse 3. It's because the Bible they had was from men, not God. They were necessary because it was necessary for Christ to die on the cross. I mean, it was necessary to have conflict. Again, this is all about free moral agency. God wanted us to learn these things without, with it costing us suffering on this earth but without costing us our souls so we can live with them eternally in heaven when the bible from god is back better not mess with it. and ananias hearing these words fell and gave up the ghost and great fear came upon all that heard it and young men arose and wrapped him around and they carried him out and buried him and it was about the space of three hours after when his wife not knowing what was done came in and peter answered unto her tell me whether you sold the land for so much. And she said, yes, for so much. But Peter said to her, how is it you have agreed together to try the spirit of the Lord? Behold, the feet of them that have buried your husband are at the door and they shall carry you out. And she fell down immediately at his feet and gave up the ghost. And the young men came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her by her husband. And great fear came upon the whole church and upon the, all that heard these things. It's time to quit playing around. And by the hands of the apostles were many signs and wonders wrought among the people. You know, that was a miracle right there, wasn't them, them being struck dead. The Holy Spirit striking them dead, proving that Christ has all authority, like he claimed. Of course, for us, we see the supernatural and we now can understand these words. They were written for us 2,000 years ago. These words were written with us in mind. Dual prophecy. Applied to people in the first century. So we are just like them. You think there's Bible characters that represent you? Yes. Those, all these in the first century, they foreshadowed you and me. The second age of Christianity. By the way, it's just foreshadowed by the second temple being built in 530 B.C. But of the rest, durst no man join himself to them. Howbeit the people magnified them, and believers were the more added to the Lord multitudes, both of them and women, insomuch that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that as Peter came by, at the least his shadow might overshadow some of them. And there also came together the multitude from the seas around about Jerusalem, bringing sick folk for them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. It's doubtful this kind of thing happens, but when we have the Bible from God, and, and certainly we're getting ready for the kingdom of Christ rules over this world, it's spiritually speaking going to be like having the tree of life again. How is that? Well, we'll have the great, the wonderful counselor, mighty God, father of all comforts, great physician. You see, truth, objective truth, supernatural truth from God is it's going to take care of us. You know, that's what we had in the Garden of Eden. Spiritually speaking, God took care of Adam and he provided for their needs. And when we're in the kingdom of heaven, all spiritual blessings will be available from Christ. And so medically speaking, there are not going to be doctors that mess around just like Ananias and Sapphira. It's not going to happen. We're going to take care of each other. We're going to love each other and do what's best for each other. Again, it's going to take us 40 years to overcome. That's what it takes, 40 years. And, of course, 
many of us are not going to live that long, but then Christ will rise first. It's going to be a first resurrection. We will be in the great wedding feast before those that are living in 40 years on the kingdom come. How be it the people magnified them and believers are more added to the Lord. Multitudes, both of them and women, insomuch that they even carried out the sick into the streets and laid them on beds and couches that as Peter came by, at the least his shadow might overshadow some of them. And there also came together the multitudes from the cities round about Jerusalem, bringing sick folk and them that were vexed with unclean spirits, and they were healed, every one. But the high priest, perhaps with Satan dwelling in him, rose up, and all they that were with him, which is of the heresy of the Sadducees. And that's the Greek word for sex or denominations. It's heresy. And they were filled with jealousy. Remember Jesus Talk to Paul about kicking against the gold, utilizing Bibles of men. But again, what are Bibles of men? But where Satan deceived us into thinking we could give to the world Bibles. We could be like God. The Septuagint, of course, justified the crucifixion of Christ because it changed the meaning of the word Elohim. Did a lot of things, men's definitions in the Bible. It's the Bible from God, again, it's supernatural. Certainly no way that God needs men's subjective truth in his Bible at all. You add one word of men's subjective truth into the God-breathed word of God, and it's not the Bible anymore. We're talking about a supernatural thing, the word of God. And laid hands on the apostles and put them in public word, but the messenger of the Lord by night opened the prison doors and brought them out and said, Go you, and stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of this life. And when they heard this, they entered into the temple about daybreak and taught. But the high priest came, and they that were with him called the council together and all the descendants of the children of Israel and sent to the prison house to have them brought. But the officers that came found them not in the prison. Again, what were they doing? They were ruling over men with their own moral standards. God wanted that to happen for 1,680 years. Show it didn't work. But notice the similarity with this couple that sold their houses and kept half of it. Again, it had to do with the wisdom of men. The wisdom of men doesn't work. The ways of men don't work. Religions of men don't work. The kingdoms are the moral standards of men don't work. We need a perfect moral standard. We need subjective truth from God. We need God. We need the King of kings and Lord of lords. We need the royal law to have peace on this earth. But the officers that came found them not in the prison, and they returned and told, saying, The prison house we found shut with all safety, and the keeper standing at the doors. But when we had opened, we found no man within. Now when the captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these words, they were much perplexed concerning them, where unto this would grow. And there came one and told them, Behold the men whom you put in the prison are in the temple standing and teaching the people. Then went the captain with the officers and brought them, but without violence, for they feared the people that they should be stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, We strictly charge you not to teach in the name. And behold, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and intend to bring this man's blood upon us. But Peter and the apostles answered and said, We must obey God rather than men. We've got to obey the Hebrew Bible and the Bible being given by the Holy Spirit in those 40-year period of time, rather than the Bibles of men, or Gnosticism, or strange fires, wisdom from below, other Gospels. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom you slew, hanging him on a tree. Him did God exalt with his right hand to be a prince and a savior, to give repentance to Israel and remission of sins. And we are witnesses of these things. And so is the Holy Spirit, who God has given to them that obey him. But they, when they heard this, were cut to the heart and minded slain them. But there stood up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, doctor of the law, had an honor with all people and commanded to put these men forth a little while. He said to them, you men of Israel, take heed to yourself as touching these things, men, what you're about to do. For before these days rolled up, Thutius giving himself out to be somebody to whom a number of men, about 400, joined themselves who were slain. 
and all as many as had obeyed him were dispersed and came to none. After this man rose up, Judas of Galilee, in the days of enrollment, and drew away some of the people after him. He also perished, and all as many as obeyed him were scattered abroad. And now I say unto you, refrain from these men and let them alone. For if this counsel or this work is of men, it will be overthrown. But if it's of God, you will not be able to overthrow them, lest happily you be found even be fighting against God. Now, this is interesting. Gnostics were either righteous or unrighteous. They were either trying to do good or men trying to do evil. It's just like the world we're living in today. People are coming out of spirits of dark ages. People are starting to understand the Bible. That seems to be what's happening here. <laughs> They're in the same position as we are. You know, at this point, Saul is still a Pharisee. And uh, he's living in all good conscience. And of course, he had to be hit over the head on the road to Damascus. But some men were figuring this out. And, you know, it's, it's amazing to me, people that are atheists, we can understand now why they're atheists because of the Bible's a man. I mean, they didn't have bad arguments. Now, we couldn't see any of this because we were in a strong delusion. We couldn't argue rationally. We couldn't use logic. Christ was delaying the second coming of Christ until the world was populated with billions. Many things that happened then, happening now. Enlightenment is coming upon the world. It's coming around. Many people are coming around. We couldn't be Christians for 1,680 years. But now the God is allowing the wisdom from above back on this world. For the second age of the kingdom. For the second age of Christianity and the second age of the kingdom. They therefore departed from the presence of the council rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. The authority of Christ. And every day in the temple and at home, they cease not to teach and declare Jesus as the Christ, the Savior. Not men, not denominationalists. Men can't preach objective truth. Christ can preach objective truth, supernatural objective truth, prophecies of God. Didn't matter when God gave them 2,000 years ago, 3,500 years ago. Now we're finding out. They were all written for us. Look at the rebuilding the walls around Jerusalem, that Nehemiah. What's that about? Restoration of the Bible. Now, it foreshadowed what's happening right now. All of the Bible is about the kingdom of God. Bible from God, it's, it's supernatural because men can't do that. Only God. Thank you for watching us today. We have commentaries, paperbacks, hardbacks, zip drives, EPUBs available. I want to share with you the pearl of great price. The question we should all ask is, what is good and evil? Objective moral truth from God is good, and subjective moral truths and lies from men are evil. Let God be true and every man a liar. For 1,680 years, the Lord has hidden objective truth in the book of Revelation. This has allowed mankind to test out the subjective moral truths of men. We're starting to come out of the spiritual dark ages and are restoring the perfect law of liberty. www.lulu.com slash spotlight slash time of the son of man.